I'm making a traditional pudding that's full of flavour and memories of my childhood. I want to rekindle that sense of fun and enjoyment we all remember from when we were kids. In Pateley Bridge, North Yorkshire is the oldest sweet shop in England, first opening its doors in 1827. If you're looking for true nostalgia, this is the best place to start. The classic ye old penny sweet shop. Look at it. It takes me back to when I was a kid again. It's got everything in here that I'm looking for. Now I'm itching to get inside, but more importantly, I want to try my favorite sweets and find inspiration for my true nostalgic pud. The shop is a family business and is run by Keith Tordoff and Paul and my wife I'll introduce his wife, wife Gloria Hello. and their son Alexander and his partner Kirsty. Oh, this is well I'm a kid again. You must be a kid working in a place like this. Oh you've got to be in a sweet shop. Absolutely. It's it's nostalgia for me. I look around, all I see is from when from the age of four to the age of fourteen, all the sweets I remember are all lined up in jars, and I, I, they are springing back to me. I'd forgotten half of this thing. Like a lot of us, I think my first love of flavours started in a sweet shop. <gasps> Toasted tea cakes. Ah, pebbles, a school favourite, a cop cop. Do you have cough candy flavour twist? Yeah, cough. No. Yeah. Sorry, I'm like a kid. I really could eat these sweets all day. Which one is your favourite? I've got to say Yorkshire Mixture. I'm from Yorkshire, I'm a Yorkshire lad, and it's got a little bit of everything in the Yorkshire Mixture. We've got in it, the obviously, the pear drop, we've got the fruit rock, and one thing that's very, very important, every single one must have a fish in it. That's tasty. Now, believe it or not, I'm here to do some serious research, and I want some advice about an old-fashioned flavour that would go well in a steam pudding. I'm looking for something that's got a bit of kick to it, a bit of character to it, and something I can put in the pudding that remind me of my youth. But I think for memories, it's got to be <laughs> the sweet peanut. Oh, yes. The smell, if you can smell the actual sweet peanut. It's just like a peanut, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. They're delicious, those. Peanut isn't the flavour I'm looking for, but I'm certainly enjoying reminiscing. Now, I'm thinking of another one. Yeah. I'm thinking strawberry. Mm. I think it's got to be, for memories, the strawberry bonbon. Oh, it's chewy. It has got that strong strawberry flavour. One thing that has stuck in my mind, one flavour that I haven't hit, and I've seen it a couple of times in the shop, licorice. Now, licorice is one of those flavours and textures that you either love it or you hate it. Yeah. In Keith's shop, he has an array of licorice I can try. And first, I choose licorice bark. All licorice starts here. All licorice starts from the root. They grow the plant. The plant itself above ground grows up to about four foot in height. And this is then, to get all the licorice products, is actually boiled to extract the juice from it. It tastes like bark. Yes. It does taste like bark. It's like chewing yeah. on a tree. Yeah, yes. But then you've got that, that sort of sharpness coming through. But I want to try licorice that's a bit more familiar. Now, you've got some in there which actually is one of my dad's favourites, a Pontefract cake. Can I you try can one? Try of again, yes. Let's help yourself. Always got the seal on it, the stamp. Which you was can see, what is the seal? The seal was originally um, to Wilkinson's Pontefract factory, and they, it used to always be stamped by hand in that, yeah. and the ladies could do about 30,000, 35,000 of these per day. Bit of aniseed added to it, a bit of treacle added to it. That's the key thing, I think, is that, is the, is, is that treacle. Yes. And uh, treacle's been added, and you can almost, you can taste that now. Yes. When, you, when you said it, I thought, yeah, I've got that. This helps me a lot. While my taste buds take in all the flavours, it's obvious that Keith knows everything when it comes to sweets. Sugar came to the UK in the 1700s, but it was scarce and expensive. This meant those selling sweets, known as confectioners, were well thought of. In high society, the confectioner, he was deemed to be the top of his trade. The baker was classed as a mere baker. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about bakers. Mayors of Pompeii were bakers. But with the advent of travel, technology, sugar started to become more readily available and suddenly became more affordable. 
these days, we don't just want our sweets to taste sweet. Oh no, kids today want something a little bit more sour. I'll show you this one. It's a super sour fizz bomb, but there was a Mark One, and this is the very, very latest Mark Where, Two. When was this done? This was literally done in the last few weeks. Really? Yes. Oh, that is quite a modern sweet then. Yeah, oh, very modern, yes, yeah. Okay. With trepidation, I'll say, can I have one, please? I'll have to give you the warning first that they are extreme and can cause irritation on your mouth. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Mm. Is that half it? Oh. <laughs> the jaw, gone. Uh. Oh, you look like you're sick. That ain't good for a sweet shop. <laughs> Dear me, that's like, um... Battery acid. Yeah. <laughs> you could run a car on that. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it feels like it's burning. Yes, yeah. While I'd recover from that super modern sweet, Keith's son, Alexander, is making sweets using a technique that's over 100 years old. We have some sugar here. Boiling with water, bit of cream of tartar. It's up to temperature now, about 154 degrees. To make the sweets, Alexander simply works and cools the sugar mix, adding in colouring and flavours. Today, he's adding mint and aniseed. I've never done anything like this before, you know. I mean, I've, I've worked with sugar before, pulling sugar. Yeah. But not adding flavours, not really. He colours sometimes, but yeah, not, yeah. not flavours. Yeah. That's amazing. Not to it. The smell, wow. Once the sugar mix is cooled, it's then shaped into a block, ready to go through a sweet roller. This is how they turn out. Yep, and then when it cools, right, you just pop them all off and you've got individual sweets. You just drop them. Oh, really? Yep. That's all you do. So you just... Ah! Like that. <laughs> got a nice flavour. I enjoyed that. Well, after eating all those sweets, I finally made my decision on which flavour I'm going to put in my next recipe. It's licorice. That flavour is delicious. And that flavour in a nostalgic pudding, for me, is the bomb. Keith, Gloria, I had such a great time that day. For me, it was like it was going back to flavours I'd forgotten. Mm. I think that's what sweets do, they rekindle all those memories from childhood and as you're growing up, that's what it's about. Saturday morning, every morning, I'd get my pocket money about 8 o'clock in the morning and they had the penny bits there. I'd have a quarter of sweets and some of the penny sweets I'd get back. And there was occasion where I'd just eat and eat until I was sick. What a way to get there. Happened on more than one occasion. Yeah. yeah. Very colourful. I admire the necklace, but oh, yeah. you haven't got that. You eat Trump me. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Trump's young. That's but not real, though, I'm, is have it? A, have that's a nibble not, on that and you'll need a dentist. That's not real. Exactly. That's real. <laughs> that's real. That's oh, a yeah. proper I'm one. I'm not swapping because it's half eaten, is yours. <laughs> you brought another load of sweets here. Good on you. <laughs> um, what I'm going to use is actually the licorice. Before you get to that point, Paul, can I just say that we've got a bit of a surprise for you today, yeah. actually? Oh, because yeah. we've gone to a lot of trouble, a lot of experiments, a lot of research. research. And I know you, you weren't Lots expecting this today. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I love it. Hollywood eyes. Yeah, I've got it. There we are. Actually, I'm honoured. It's, it's, not, it's not a nasty it's trick, not though. Nasty. It's, it's not nasty. It's a tart. Tart. Raspberry flavour. You call me a tart. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you wear a necklace... I love that. You know what's happening now? My, my taste buds have been... They're like fine-tuned instruments. A bit assaulted. It's just been kicked in the teeth. <laughs> yeah. It's just been yeah. welly. That's lovely. Thank you. I'm, I'm made up with them. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> now... What I'm going to do is a licorice, a licorice steamed pudding. Now, the idea of coming from the licorice was when I was over there. Licorice is one of those big favourites of mine. And I think it will work well in this steamed pudding. My steamed puddings are surprisingly light and fluffy, and the licorice gives it a fruity tang that runs beautifully through the sponge. If you don't like licorice, these puds could change your mind. Now, to start with, I'm going to add all the ingredients. I've got flour, sugar, I've got three eggs going in. Once these have gone in, basically it's an all-in-one mix. You just mix it all together. So throw it all in, three eggs. Then I've got some butter. Then this is the interest to me. I've got some baking powder in there. You want a little bit of rise from it, lighten it up. And I've got... What's that? Oh, it's treacly. Treacly. It's licorice extract. Right. The pure, this is, this the, pure, is the pure oh, stuff. From, yeah. from the sticks. The yes, sticks. exactly. Get it in the mix. Now, this will give it a lovely aniseed licorice flavour. 
but also just darken it that little bit, a little bit as well into, into the pudding. Mix the ingredients together until well blended, and it's as easy as that. Perfect. This is the basic mixture, which I'm going to spoon into there. And these are the little pots and baking. I've just buttered the inside of them. And could you pass me four of those little so, Catherine wheel yep. things, please? Better to be different colours, different centres. We've got various names, spogs, horse cakes, jelly S buttons. Really? Yes, all different names, you oh, see. Pink and blue things, pink aren't they? Yeah. I can't use that, you see, so I've got to take... Oh, we oh, need really? those. <laughs> Where's not one, that? Place the licorice into the bottom of the buttered and lined moulds. Then simply spoon in the mixture, allowing a bit of space for the sponge to rise. So what I've got is my four pots that are filled with this licorice sponge. I've got the licorice at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is just pop onto each one. Silicon paper goes on first, just to prevent the pudding from sticking to it. Then a little bit of foil on top of that and squeeze it down just to seal it off slightly. You don't need to wrap these up. So on each one, pop a bit of the paper, then the foil. Then place the moulds in a steamer. I made some earlier, which are already steamed. I've steamed these for about 45 minutes on simmer. Now, these are going to pop back in here to finish off. These have been steamed. Now, when you look at this, you can see how it's domed slightly yeah. as they've grown in the, in the little pot. Oh, oh, oh. there we are. Perfect. There you go. Oh, they've kept the shape. Oh, perfect. There you have it. Licorice puddings. This wonderfully light and buttery pudding is a real winter warmer that hits the spot every time. Thank you very much, guys, because I thoroughly enjoyed myself at your shop. Thank you for the inspiration with the licorice and a big thank you for my sweets. Many thanks. We're going to have to wait a little bit longer to eat this. But to eat that, a little bit of cream, if you're in the north, a little bit of custard. Earlier, Aaron Capil taught me a thing or two about spices. White pepper is essentially exactly the same as black pepper, mm. but the black husk has been taken off it. That's all white pepper is. Really? Absolutely. And he's brought with him some homemade blondies made with white pepper, perfect for my next dish. Now, it is a twist on a trifle. And what I mean by that is it's a 70s twist because I'm going to use the idea of a Black Forest Gatto. Now, if you're a fan of the Black Forest Gatto, a German classic dessert, then you're in for a treat, as I give it a twist and turn it into a trifle using the same combination of flavours, chocolate, cherries and kirsch. 